And, and the focus of our indies is all on what we're doing. So like our quarterback indie period, I'm just going to take you through one, you know, one deal. So, so in our offense, the expectations of that quarterback, again, film study, you know, we require more out of this, you know, and I say you as a coach must facilitate. So I don't expect my quarterback to go home, watch a ton of film. I mean, he, he may on his own, you know, but we, we again, facilitate it. All right. We get used to scanning defenses, pre-snap, how they're, how they're aligning. Are they giving us uncovered? All those kind of things are important. We do a quarterback school with our quarterbacks in the off season that, that get them ready uh, to be able to do that. So it's just second nature out there, but every rep is an opportunity to do that. And you have to stress that with your guys. Like if you're out there just practicing, you're wasting reps. Like every, every chance out there, every time out there is a chance to, to, to scan a defense and, and recognize a defense. And, you know, I think that's important. Um, the fundamentals, obviously we want to be consistent and never ending improvement. And then obviously understanding how the system works, you know, for them. Now his responsibilities, okay, in this offense, all right, we want to, he has to quickly get us aligned into the formation. So the formation comes in, he's got to be like the drill, the drill sergeant, man. He's got to be moving everybody around, getting everybody set up and, and ready to rock and roll. You know, he's going to get the play call. He's responsible for relaying it. You know, the initial play call to the, to the offensive lineman one time in each direction. He gives that pre-step scan of those perimeter boxes, you know, that, that I talk about in the, you know, in, in the other videos. And um, then obviously if motion, he's the one making sure everyone is set. He's the one giving the indicator to move the motion. And again, if we're in a situation where these perfect conditions exist, the ball should be snapped within five seconds of that ball being set, ready for play. You know, those are the ideal responsibilities for the quarterback. Okay. And, and we talk about reads with our quarterback. So we talk about a pre-snap look. So a look is a pre-snap picture that can change. So that's, you know, your numbers, your leverage. Okay, do we have three on two out there in the perimeter box? Oh, are they giving us an uncovered over the slot receiver to the boundary? All right. Now, the post snap is the reaction. That's when we get into our multiple adjusting routes, our choice packages. You know, all of those things are, are that post snap reaction. So, so again, you know, how we do it daily, you know, every period has that focus. All right. We want our quarterback to be that conductor to play fast. We want him to be the one. He's the one out there, you know, leading the way. Again, I talked about teaching off of film and how we do that and, and you know, those mental reps. All right. And, and there are ways at practice. We want to force the quarterback out of his comfort zone. You know, we want to give him some bad snaps. We want to give him some bad balls, you know, and see how he handles it. And, you know, and obviously we, we stress at all times taking care of the football. And, and to me, any turnover on offense involving an interception, a, a running back to quarterback exchange, a snap is the quarterback's fault. So the quarterback is taught to take the responsibility for that because that's what a leader does. So, you know, we, we really stress that with kids. There's never any argument. Oh, that was my fault. I put it in there. It hit the ground. You know, no, it's a quarterback's fault, whether it's his fault or not. He fumbles a snap. It's his fault. Now he'll get with the center and get the center squared away on, look, you need to get that ball up. OK, but but he will accept in, in front of the team, he will accept the responsibility, you know, for that mistake. All right. So we start the Indies. We'll do a we'll line five yards apart of their quarterbacks and we'll just do a drop and play recognition. So so I'll call out a play and I just want to see the quarterback's feet and I want to see his eyes and I want to see him work through a progression. OK, so if we call our slide route and he's reading the area outside defender. And he, you know, I want to see him progress, you know, through all of that. So, so we, we'll do that, you know, just to get some reps and we'll do some sort of an escape drill. Everybody's got their own. It doesn't, you know, this is a very crude drawing, but these would be like step over bags. And, you know, we work the drop and weaving through and coming to balance and, you know, getting the ball to receiver. I mean, this isn't a quarterback drill tape, but I just wanted to kind of get you. We do work during this period throwing on the move. Okay. Um, you know, circle drill is one that we do. Scramble drill, you know, is one that we do. So, so anything you can do to incorporate your quarterback using his lower body on the move to throw the football, I think is good. Now, a, a great one, okay, that, that we have done is this rapid fire, is this rapid fire drill. 
it, and it's basically a screen drill where you're going to take all of your receivers. So it's the last five minutes of Indy. So the receivers have just completed their Indies, running backs, you know, typically two. And you'll get them together, okay? And we'll line them up. And whatever the screen is that we're running, the fast screen, whatever, they're going to line up they're going to run that screen. Now, you're going to have a coach here snapping. Now what we have is we have two ball bags. We have a ball bag right here that's filled with footballs. So my suggestion to you, again, I don't, I don't get expensive with the practice equipment that I need for practice. One thing that is expensive is, is I ask for a lot of footballs. We order a lot of footballs because we use a lot of footballs at practice because the way we practice and we want to throw the ball and we want to have good footballs to throw. Now, I come to a compromise with our athletic director and we get, um, they call them Wilson practice balls. They're the same as the GST. They're just marked practice on there. That's what we use for a lot of those. They're a little bit cheaper, maybe 10 or $15 cheaper a ball, which makes it a little more manageable. But we've been saved up from from old years and those old balls that are the ones the treads all worn off and are bad, you know, those become our, our wet weather balls. We call them where if we're going to play a rain game that week, we might get a bucket of water, dump those balls in the, in the bucket of water and, and let them go ahead and throw those. But um, in this scenario, we'll have a ball bag filled with balls. Now we'll have an empty ball bag sitting about right here. We have a coach and the coach is going to rapid fire, snap the ball to the quarterback. And this is a great opportunity to get your quarterback high snaps, low snaps, you know, good snaps, and basically a quarterback has got to catch it and rip it. So not getting the laces, you're working not throwing with the laces, if that's, you know, part of your scheme. This for us is in the gun, we're throwing a fast screen, we don't need the laces, we're just trying to get the football. So he he's going to grip it and rip it, all right? He's going to grip it and rip it. His emphasis is getting the ball out, throwing without the laces and accuracy. So we're trying to throw an accurate ball, all right? And the coach will snap as soon as the quarterback recoils He'll he'll get him another another ball and then again he's gonna he's gonna mix those bad balls in, all right. Now what the receivers do, the coaching point, they're gonna catch the ball and then they're gonna burst for ten yards. Okay, we stress that catch it and then burst up the field for ten yards and then they'll jog over and they'll drop the ball in the empty ball bag and they'll get lined up over here for the next rep. And it takes time because if you've got 25 running backs and receivers in your program, it's gonna take a while to work through all that. So it's not like it's a lot of you know, emphasis on this kid here. He's going to have a little bit of time to time to recover, you know, in between the drill. But we'll do it to both sides. So so what will happen is they'll work through, they'll do this, they'll line up, and then we'll we'll switch quarterbacks. We'll have quarterbacks throw to both sides, and then we'll 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 switch it up. But again, that gets back to the load management on your quarterback's arm, okay? Because you want to be careful, you know, how many you really do want to want to chart up and have an idea for how many passes you want your quarterback throwing. 